climate change is obviously an enormous issue, but uh, it's unlike other issues in a number of ways which make it not ring our moral alarm bells in the way that those issues like terrorism or some sort of uh, health threat do. Uh, climate change, for one, it doesn't have uh, an intentional agent that is propagating the climate change. And our moral system is very finely tuned to having uh, a villain, uh, a mustache twirling villain who's intending to harm us. With climate change, there isn't that person. The, the villains are all us, and we're not intending to do it. And so for the, in, in that sense, it's not a, a problem which registers at a, at a very moral and uh, a villainous type way. Our actions seem like tiny drops in the buckets, and they are tiny drops in the buckets. They just accumulate, uh, given the massive amount of humans on the planet. The other thing is that people are very defensive about their own responsibility for these things. We don't like to think of ourselves in negative ways. And in the same way that we would physically squirm out of position, which is paining us. So if we're in bed or in a chair and we're in an uncomfortable position, we'll squirm out of it. Psychologically, we do the same thing. So any sort of issue which kind of blames us, we get self-defensive about. We try to, because we feel guilty, we try to squirm our way out of it psychologically. And we do that with climate change all the time. The other thing is that we become unreasonably optimistic about it. So if there's any uh, level of uncertainty, any doubt that climate change could be going on or could have the disastrous consequences that it probably will have, we tend to interpret that uncertainty in the most positive possible way, thinking maybe we'll avoid this whole thing. Maybe the scientists, because they had some misstep a few years ago, are completely wrong about the whole issue. It's become, unfortunately, a massively politically polarized issue. And when that happens, well, then you have a whole side of people that are just turning off of the issue so as to remain good members in good moral standing with the group that they identify with. So the fact that climate change has become a right-left issue where it's supported by uh, Democrats uh, or, or liberals and not supported by conservatives. And so when you have a group that uh, part of their political identity is to not believe in climate change, then to be a good member of that group, you don't believe in it. It's also one of these issues where uh, the victims uh, are not obvious to us. We don't see it happening. We don't see people we love being affected by it. And even most uh, people in the wealthy countries, they assume mostly correctly, that the victims of climate change are going to be poor people in other countries, in tropic countries, or people who aren't yet born. And so it's not affecting people who are our moral in-groups, people that we're overly concerned about. The issue that climate change is now negatively affecting people far away and will in the future affect people who aren't born yet, people that we don't know, is one of the one of the strong demotivators to act on this. But if we can expand our kind of moral identity, our group identity to include all humans and say polar bears and other animals, um, that will motivate people. If you, if you start talking about people's grandchildren and people that their grandchildren will know or their great grandchildren, if you appeal to the fact that these people share a lot uh, with our own humanity, then you can get people to care about the people who are going to be the victims of climate change. That's very important. When you, when you hit people in the heart, that's really what changes their behavior. Rather than talking about 10,000 people in Indonesia being neg negatively affected by a flood or a million people in, say, Somalia being affected by a drought, you want to point to individual examples. So one girl, say, in Nigeria who's been negatively affected by this or, or one single uh, uh, family that's been negatively affected by stuff in Sri Lanka. That humanizes things. That makes people part of our group in a way that just talking about the statistics doesn't work. Social norms are incredibly powerful things and people are hugely responsive to them. And there's been a bunch of psychological research showing that if you just convey social approval for getting people to act responsibly, then people will fall in line with that kind of behavior. And you see this happening with the recycling movement. A, a number of uh, uh, advertisements are uh, very effectively uh, creating a culture where uh, people seek social approval and avoid social disapproval by recycling. If we can uh, expand that to, to, to the larger issues dealing with climate change, then I think that will be highly effective.